What's up, Slackers? Welcome to Book Cheats. Today we'll be talking about Animal Farm Chapter 10. This is the final chapter in the book, and I gotta say it's kind of depressing. So, at the beginning of this chapter, years have passed, and only a few of the original animals still remain on the farm. The only ones who are left alive from the rebellion times are Benjamin the donkey, Clover the horse, Moses the raven, and some of the pigs. Even Mr. Jones had died by this time. He basically drunk himself to death and died in a bar. Nobody remembered Snowball. The only people who remembered Boxer were those who knew him. Clover was getting old. She was two years past retirement, yet she hadn't retired yet. In fact, none of the animals had retired yet. Squealer was so fat that he couldn't see out of his eyelids. The only animal who was pretty much the same was Benjamin. The farm at this point had many more animals. They even had three more horses besides Clover. The three other horses were really hard workers, but they were also incredibly dumb. <laughs> the animal farm had become incredibly efficient. The windmill was now done, and two fields had been purchased from Mr. Pilkington. The farm now possessed a threshing machine, and they had a hay elevator too. And many new buildings had been added. The windmill had not been used to create electricity as they had promised, but instead was used to mill corn. The animals were hard at work at another windmill, and the pigs promised them that this one would be installed to use electric power. This is obviously a lie too. Nobody talked about the three day work week anymore, because Napoleon said that the new spirit of animalism was to work as hard as possible. The farm seemed to prosper more and more, although the animals had the same quality of lives. The only animals whose lives seemed to improve were the pigs and the dogs. Squealer told the animals that the pigs were always hard at work creating files, but they had to burn them every night. Basically, it was just an excuse to show that they didn't have any proof of their work. Even though the animals lived pretty much the same quality of lives, they still had the pride that they were the only farm in England that was run by exclusively animals. The animals hoped for a day when England would be run all by animals, but they didn't do anything to plan for this to happen. One day in early summer, Squealer ordered the sheep to go to a field. He told them to stay there until he told them to leave. Squealer would go out there every day to teach the sheep a new song. The sheep were eventually ordered back, and one day Clover let out a loud neigh. All the animals rushed in to see what it was. When the animals rushed in, they saw Squealer walking on two legs. Right when some of the animals were going to protest, the sheep began to sing the song that Squealer had taught them. They began to chant, four legs good, two legs better. Then all the pigs and the dogs came out all walking on two legs. Napoleon came out walking on two legs and he was even carrying a whip. The sheep continued until nobody wanted to protest what they saw. Four legs good, two legs better. Four legs good, two legs better. Clover took Benjamin to the farm to have him read the commandments to her. But the commandments were all gone. Only one thing remained on the barn wall where the commandments had been, and it read, All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. The next day, all the pigs were carrying whips. It wasn't strange to any of the animals to see the pigs installing phone lines and ordering magazines. And the animals didn't even think it was strange when the pigs began to wear clothes. A week later, the pigs invited some humans over to tour their farm. The animals kept their heads down, and they didn't know whether to be more scared of the humans or the pigs. That night, the humans and the pigs were playing cards together, drinking and partying it up. Mr. Pilkington and Napoleon had made amends and now were friends. The farmers admired how the pigs could get more productivity out of the animals while feeding them less. Mr. Pilkington chuckled how the animals had classes just like humans. Mr. Pilkington made a toast to the prosperity of the animal farm. The pigs had buried the skull of Old Major and had painted the flag all green, removing the hoof and the horn. Napoleon removed the name of Animal Farm and changed the name of the farm back to its original name, Manor Farm. At the very end of the book, there's an uproar in the farmhouse because Mr. Pilkington and Napoleon both lay down aces at the same time. <laughs> the animals look from man to pig, and none of the animals could tell the difference between the two. And that concludes the book. Thanks so much for watching Book Cheats. Please leave that like and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. You guys have a great day. If you have any questions from your homework, please leave a comment in the description below. 
And as always, slack on. I'm good, I'm